Good evening, Huyanand, dear applicants. Welcome to this session of the Faculty of Science, this live session where, as we embark on this journey with you through science on your academic career that awaits you. Um, we will, as you consider your academic path, um, we will give you a brief overview of what awaits you, not only an academic, uh, not only a career, but a degree, but uh, a complete pathway or world of inquiry and discovery and endless possibilities. I'm Artika Valentine. I'm the coordinator for academic and student affairs. I have to my left um, a lecturer. Hi, I'm uh, Dr. JJ Van Seil. I give uh, physics for some first year students. And I have a student with me. Hello, I'm Yasin De Costa. I'm a final year BC student. Yeah, so we understand that you had a good time now with your matric ball and you all geared up for your final year exams. But we know that you accepted your, your conditional offers and there are some things that are troubling you or causing you some uncertainties. So this session is for you so that we can answer all of those um, questions for you. Use the WhatsApp line to send us your questions, um, but let us just, let me take you um, to give you an overview of the faculty. Just look out for this video um, to give you the reasons why you should register with the Faculty of Science. Welcome to a world of discovery at Stellenbosch University's Faculty of Science. Here, we blend tradition with innovation, preparing you to tackle the scientific challenges of our age. As you transition into this new chapter, you'll find a balance between structured learning and self-directed exploration. One of the reasons why I love biochemistry so much, apart from it being in the field that I want to go into one day, it's also about how easy it is to understand the concepts and it brings me back to the point, ask questions. The facilities that they have, so the pracs are really cool. I think in my first year we dissected a frog and then we also worked with little baby chicks and it was so cool because we were all playing with them and cuddling. When you get to your first week of classes, Join the WhatsApp groups for your modules because those WhatsApp groups helps you remember when your assignments are due, help you with if you don't understand a concept, some other student might understand it better. You just ask a question, they'll explain it in a different way because everyone has different ways of learning and maybe someone has a similar way to you. So use the facilities that are here, the SS, the Yan Matan, the Narkas. It helps you because it gives you a place where you can sit down and focus because you might not always have that focus at home or in your raised room. Make sure you read the module framework before the academic year begins. I love the administration at Stellenbosch University and I love how effectively they solve many issues. The reason I come to Narka is when it's load shedding, there's always power. So I come here, I do my, get my work done and it's, the computers are really efficient when it comes to running code. So it's the perfect learning environment for you. Flexible assessment approach means that every assignment, from lab practicals to quizzes, shapes your academic journey. Tailored tutorials offer the support you need academically, while the institutional mentoring program looks after your emotional needs. I'm here to tell you university is so exciting, but it can be a bit daunting, especially when you fail your first test. But don't worry, every student that comes through here, whether you be in a PSO or in a residence, you have a mentor and a support system to look after you. I've had the privilege this year of being a mentor at HMC at a residence, and it's been wonderful. For academic support, all under and postgraduate students have access to a dedicated academic advisor, with her office conveniently located in the AI Payroll building. And for those with a thirst for hands-on learning, fieldwork opportunities await. And then one of the trips that I went to recently this year was um, the trip for hydrogeology. We went to Yongasuk, we were hiking there. I learned so much, we got so much data for our project, our assignment. So our students mainly work on the uh, icebreaker ship that goes often to the Southern Ocean. Currently it is in Gao Island, or rather going to the Gao Island, and my students are there on the ship uh, working on taking some samples that they will analyze for the trace metals and eventually they will look at uh, how iron and manganese co-limits the productivity in the ocean. 
and what the impact the island itself has in supplying that iron and manganese to the ocean waters. This is more than just a degree. It's a deep dive into subjects you're passionate about, equipping you to address issues from climate change, artificial intelligence, and emerging diseases. People usually use this lab to analyze proteins or analyze DNA from different types of samples, whether it be blood samples or tissue samples or cell samples. I use this lab to make plant extracts for my projects. Your path in science is about to unfold, and we're excited to be a part of your journey. Hi, I'm Jabul Rukele. I'm heading this beautiful place called the First Year Chemistry Building. We're looking forward to having you all BSc students to come and experience some wild, exciting experiments and practicals in the lab. Come and join us. We love it in the SU. The Faculty of Science at Stellenbosch University is more than just an institution. It's a community where ideas flourish and futures are shaped. Embrace the journey ahead, knowing you are backed by a legacy of excellence and a future brimming with possibilities. As you look forward to your journey with us, remember the strong foundation of excellence that supports you. We're preparing for 2024 and we're ready to welcome you into our community. Great, so I hope you enjoyed that. It was just an appetizer. Your questions are coming in quite fast and furiously. So first, let me explain the process. You submitted your application. We considered that through selection and you got a conditional offer. Now you accepted that offer. Now we expect you to go and write your exams. You, got, you will get your final results in January and then we will issue a final offer. That offer must be accepted within three days and after accepting it, you will be ready to register. So if you, um, your offer expired over the weekend because of our systems that were down, please send an email to Signs at Sun so that we can consider and reissue those offers for you that expired. Um, we, you only have until the end of October for reissuing. After that, you will have to wait until January for us to do that. So let's look at some of the questions. I think um, the first one is um, people are asking about, and I will refer to um, our lecturer, they are asking about the difference between university and school. So they're quite familiar with the school setup. Now, what is what can they expect and should they feel overwhelmed? Uh, yeah, um, yeah, that's a good question and I think a very important question that you have to sort out for yourself. Um, look, the demands of university and academia are far bigger than what you were used to at school. It's going to require you to work uh, much harder and much smarter. Um, I often get students uh, doing well at school and then they believe that they can do the same amount of uh, effort and get the same marks and it's just not the case. Uh, university academia is very demanding. Uh, you have to plan uh, well in advance. You have to make sure your time planning is, is adequate. Uh, prepare yourself uh, well enough. Um, there's a lot of reading that you need to do. There's a lot of practice that you need to do. And the name of the game is engagement. You need to be engaged with the work. So as much time that you can spend as possible. So yeah, um, although your experiences of school, um, it may be very different at university. And I suggest when you come to university, have a look at what's offered in the courses, have a look at what uh, is presented in the module framework and plan accordingly so that you are not uh, surprised when the test and the exams come. Yeah. Yasin, how did you cope? In first year, I must be honest, I didn't. <laughs> but um, I made use of the university's resources. I attended the writing lab. I attended, I made use of the educational psychologist that the university offers. Um, because I, I didn't have a, I didn't study, my study routine wasn't uh, appropriate for university level uh, academia, academic, academics. Um, but uh, I picked up some study skills, soft, soft skills, I would say. To aid in my uh, to aid my degree. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, so you see, it, it's definitely, definitely possible. Uh, Yasin is currently a final year student in the BSc Human Life Science program. So we have quite a, lo a lot of questions that are coming in. Um, we will address your questions online, so we will not respond to the WhatsApp line, we will address it online. Then the next question is about what they can expect um, in terms of, from the faculty. Um, I think this is in, in terms of support, so we address that, that. But there's one specific question, and it is from a parent saying that they have to leave their youngest um, son now in Stellenbosch, it, the, they're from far away. How can they support their son? What can they expect and how should they trust us to leave their son with <laughs> us? Yeah, if I yeah. may uh, respond to that. Um, this is a great time for all the applicants. Uh, they have made a great decision to come to university. They've made some decisions about their life and their career. It's their time. And uh, the university will offer those opportunities for students to grow, find themselves, uh, learn new skills. And the best that parents can do is support their uh, children. Um, but that doesn't mean they have to do things for their children. Um, this is the, the opportunity where students can grow and become um, yeah, the mature people that they, that they can be. Yeah. So we suggest be that support structure in the background, but let the students um, fight their own battles, find out from the resources what is available, communicate to the lecturers, um, make friends with peers in your class, yeah. uh, read the material that was provided, uh, ask questions, there are student support structures, student counselling available. Um, the invitation is to all students, if they struggle and they worry, uh, please reach out. But this is your time. Uh, this is your time to grow and thrive. And uh, it's maybe good that you leave your parents behind. <laughs> yeah, but also remember that from my office, um, I'm coordinating the academic and student affairs, so it's important you saw my office in the video clip and to get familiar. So if there's troubling issues, your mother is far, far away, but I am at, uh, on campus and I can sort out most of your academic problems. Yasin, how did you find support from your peer students in class, in it's residence? Very yeah. Yes, um, it's very important to, I would say in first year, socially to make friends with your peers. Um, you will find that you support each other. And um, just with regards to uh, the question that the mother, mother posed about security on campus, what I do know is that there's, there's multiple services to take care of students on campus. So just f for example, I know there's a, a WhatsApp line that you can send a message and a security guard will come and escort you to where you need to go around um, Salambosh yeah. um, if you need to return home late at night. And there are shuttle services running from campus late at night um, till, till early in the morning, because yeah. I used to take them, that you book, and it takes you directly to the front of your, to your house. Yeah, so, so that does exist on campus. So a question here is that, so you accepted your offer now, some of you accepted conditional offers if you're still in grade 12, some of you received final offers if you are already in possession of a school leaving certificate. So if you think that you that this program is now not for you anymore, you should consider something else, then this is the period to ask for a change so that we can reconsider you. So you can submit an email to science at sun.ac.za and you ask and please make sure that you add your application ID because without that we cannot do anything. Then you must please remember we received this year over 25,000 applications for the science faculty. We only have 750 spaces available for registration in 2024. So our selection cutoffs are quite high for certain programs. So if you ask for reconsideration, it does not mean that it will automatically happen. And what is also important that is that you should be in possession of a conditional offer and accepted that offer 
for us to reconsider or change your program. Otherwise, we will not do that unless you come back in January and you ask, you submit a request for reconsideration. So another question here um, is regarding the lectures and what is our mode of instruction and our mode of assessment. Um, and it, it refers to our success of our students. Dr. Van Sel, can you maybe? Yeah, so the, the general rule will be that you will attend a class. Um, a lecture will take place in a 50-minute time period. Um, in that time, a lecturer will explain material, maybe do some exercises and examples. Um, this is a time where you can participate. Um, from my side, I would always suggest that students prepare themselves adequately before they come to class just to get the benefit of that 50 minutes in class. Uh, I doubt whether much learning happens in a class when material is new, so it's always good to be prepared so that you can make the best of the material. There are also other uh, study and learning opportunities available that we call tutorials. These are larger classes that meet in the afternoons. And those are opportunities for you to go through problems and exercises with the presence of tutors and the lecturer. Uh, and yeah, that's basically how the lectures are. Um, there are also practicals that happen in the afternoons where you can get hands-on experience on some experiments. Um, and then the assessments will uh, mostly be sit-down tests. Some tests are done on a computer, uh, um, but most of them are sit-down exams, uh, very much uh, similar to what you're used to at school. Um, then different departments have different ways of assessing. Some are multiple choice, some are longer, some are essay type. So it really depends on the department and the subject. But it will be very similar to what you used to at school. So this is a very popular question. So we are guaranteed that we will always get this question. And I received it almost five times now already. So, Mr. De Costa, what can you tell our applicants online about textbooks? Because uh -huh. everybody wants to buy textbooks. What I recommend for everyone is that you attend your class for about a week or so and you assess. Because each lecturer um, uses different materials. And um, like for example, I know with Dr. Dr. Van Sel, he, he, he refers to the textbook often. And he also uses the additional resources within the textbook. But not all lecturers do that. Some may choose to um, use current, current research or recent research to supplement the material. So I recommend that you attend each lecture or, and you assess for yourself whether you feel like the textbook is necessary for you because they are expensive. Yeah, it's quite expensive. And there are module frameworks available for every module that will stipulate the requirements for that specific module. So do sim spend some time when you get the module framework to scrutinize that document and make sure you are prepared for that specific module. And what about computers? Computers, laptops. Yeah, laptops. <laughs> what do? Um, I would say that it's useful but not necessary. Mm. Yeah, because it's a very expensive device mm. also. Yeah, yeah. There are some basic computers that you can consider. Uh, the normal entry computer, like a uh, Core i3, i5, will be perfectly suitable. Um, it's not required in the beginning of the year when you start. Uh, maybe it's better to hang on a little bit to see what the requirements are of the different subjects, and then you can make a better choice. But a very simple entry-level computer with about 4 to 8 gig RAM will be absolutely suitable. Make sure you have Wi-Fi capabilities, and uh, that, should be, that should be adequate. Yeah. So another question is about our inclusivity and um, specifically to our teaching in classes and practicals in tutorials. And um, remember I said in the beginning, so we accept 750 first year students. So some of our classes are quite big, 750 to 1000 students. So Dr. Van Sel, how can we address the inclusivity? Yeah, so with these large classes, um, it, it is usually the case where we split the classes up into an Afrikaans and an English group, and then students can, uh, during registration, choose the language of education, and then they will be grouped in that um, language group. And so if you, for example, choose to um, have education in English, your classes will be solely English. Um, during tutorials where there are many more students in one venue and maybe one lecturer and uh, 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 tutors that may not be um, 
capable of speaking other languages than English. Um, you will get support from that lecturer and that tutorial may be in English, but usually there are uh, lecturers and tutors that can speak other languages and you are always welcome to ask them. It's more engagement during the tutorials and the practicals, not so much a uh, presentation of information. And so it's, it's more of a conversation that you can have with support. Um, and so the mm -hmm. language doesn't play that big a role, um, but you will be um, yeah, received in your language of, of choice and uh, I think it should be adequate for you. Yeah. What is also important, so for the Faculty of Science, we have a language implementation plan and each and every module that we offer in this faculty, the language of instruction is stipulated in that language plan. It is annually, it is updated, um, and we try with multilingual um, setups in, in smaller groups to give students um, exposure to the other language um, that they are not, that is not their mother tongue. Mm -hmm. Yasin, how did you experience the language issue in the bigger classes and in small practicals and um, tutorials? What I noticed, just um, building on from what Dr. Van Sel said, is that the official learning material is presented in both modes, but if you want additional um, additional support, then you can, you can, you can find someone to, to, to assist you in that way, um, in your language of choice. Um, and I found with some classes they will have uh, translators in the class for certain students, and um, either at the beginning or at the end of a lecture they may give a, a brief summary of the entire lecture in, um, in Afrikaans, or, or depending on the class in English. So people, um, I guess they missed some of our earlier uh, things on the textbooks, we covered that. We do not in, um, recommend that you buy textbooks beforehand. Um, the lecturer will instruct you on what is required and it will be stipulated in a module framework that you will receive um, on our learning management system which is called SunLearn. Then also there's a question on what to expect next. So from now on, I think it's important that you focus on your exam and then passing those exams, meeting our requirements to register, then we will give you a final offer. You accept that final offer and then you will get a link to register. Orientation week is starting um, towards the end of January and then we will group you and give you a program of where you should be for the start of the welcoming program. Um, another um, question that is consistently coming up is about the change in programs. Um, so we have or, or we facilitate changes in programs. So we understand that students or applicants at this stage have a quite narrow vision about what, what we offer. And once they engage with our students and lecturers and researchers, they get to know more about the programs that we offer. So we allow students to change. So if you accepted an offer, you can now request a change in program. You can again request a change in program when you received your final offer or when you received your final marks. And then when you went through the semester and you realized this program is really not for me, then there's another opportunity. So in the middle of the year, you can request um, a change in program, you can do so at the end of the year also. What is also important is that many of our students are um, ending up in the Faculty of Science, but they actually want to transfer into other faculties. So a BSc program as a first year, you will have to apply to that other program and you will be considered based on your school leaving results and your first year results. So any BSc doesn't have to be human life sciences, it doesn't have to be something in biological sciences. And this second program becomes very, very important because if you do not get into the medical program, then this second program becomes your career. Yasin, how, how did you experience the, ex the extended curriculum program? Or the EDP program, yeah. yes, uh, now the ECP program. Now ECP, yes. Um, I found it particularly useful for me um, with regards to Yerimus, and I know that is something specific to Stellenbosch University because it, um, it boosted the overall total of my Yerimus. 
I would say, and that came in, uh, that helped me along the course of my academic career. Um, but uh, the un specifically the module University Practice of the National Sciences in the EDP program um, assisted me with uh, certain soft skills, I would say. Soft skills that, um, that, you, that aid in your academic career. That isn't maybe perhaps part of your fundamental sciences like modules but they assist with you getting your final degree. Mm. Yeah, and then uh, Dr. Fonso, we have quite a number of questions of people asking that, so I chose my program now and there's a specific focal area, when will I get to specialize in my subject that I'm interested in? <laughs> That's fantastic to think like that. It means that you're eager to get all the skills that you want for your career. Um, mostly the first years and the second years are the introductory years where most of the courses share common subjects, um, sort of the basics. If you do a physics degree and you want to end up in, say, laser physics or nuclear physics, um, you would start your first and second years doing basic physics that everybody else does. Sometimes there's specialization in the third year already, um, but most of the specialization will happen in the honors year or the master's year. Um, but it also depends on the department. Uh, I'm speaking on behalf of physics, um, and there are some streams in the physics department that you can start choosing in your third year already. Um, but it depends on the department. Yeah. And then there are some questions on the coding language and whether computer science, if you're in a computer science program, whether you should have the computer applications technology or the IT in school. So this is not a requirement for admission. Obviously, it's some good foundation if you do have it, but it's not a requirement um, for admission into the computer science program. We do require good mathematical skills um, for any mathematical science program. So that's more important. Then also we have an onboarding program that will be launched uh, around about after your exams. And then that particular onboarding program, we have the upskilling learning units where we will give you the link to upskill your mathematics, your chemistry and your physics in the... So, um, Many of the questions are now about changing programs <laughs> and, and people that are uncertain about it. Is this normal for them to feel this big uncertainty? It's very normal. It's very normal, especially in first year. And I will say school leaving, and I got university in first year, there were so many programs that I heard for the first time that I never knew existed. Um, but I was accepted into Stellenbosch to agri-science. And I got offered the EDP engineering program and I switched further into BSc Human Life Sciences and then afterwards I additionally added on psychology to my degree as well. So there's a lot of opportunity to change and to tell your degree to what you want. Dr. Fonso, they, they say that we are an outstanding university and in this faculty and we have quite unique staff members in terms of our academics and our researchers. What are the, some of the things that you can highlight for us that uh, yeah. makes <laughs> us unique? Uh, um, of course, Stellenbosch University is, is world-renowned, and um, we make sure that the kind of exposure that we give students is top of the range. Uh, our, our lecturers are professionals. They are researchers uh, at the front end of their research. Uh, they are active researchers. Um, they are even researching in education. Um, so you can be sure that when you come to Stellenbosch University, the kind of exposure you will get will put you at the front end of what you need. So you are more than welcome to come to Stellenbosch University. Um, we will provide uh, the real necessary professionalism that you need. Um, that's for sure. Nathan, how did you experience our lecturers and researchers? Um, I found them to be very engaging. I found, that, uh, I found them to be very helpful, very supportive. Um, but in addition, they, like for example, uh, in for now, my final year physiology, the lecturer, um, they is presenting the material from research, current research, um, because many of the textbooks don't have a section that perhaps covers the work to an adequate level to his satisfaction. 
So he, many, a lot of the material that he now is um, uploading as support is current research or recent research in that specific area, which I find very, very engaging. Yeah. Very so exciting. I just want to tell you more about the extended curriculum program. So our mainstream programs, our BSc degrees and BDATSI, which are three years, and the BDATSI is four-year programs. And our extended curriculum program has an additional year where year one has a special curriculum. So students that we accept for the extended curriculum program must be currently in grade 12. So if you completed grade 12 already or improving your results, you will not qualify for an extended curriculum program. Then remember that we use selection criteria um, to do cutoffs um, in terms of who we select and who we admit. And students that are missing that selection, uh, selection criteria will now, we will uh, engage with you, send you an email and ask if you would like to change to an extended curriculum program. So please look out for the email. I will send you that email. You have limited time to respond. We will make an offer to you that you can accept. And if you improve your marks in January with your final school leaving results, then you can register for the mainstream program. There's also many questions. I think people are quite anxious about this because remember I told you that we have higher selection cutoffs and, and that got you a conditional offer. And now we, with your final results, you must only meet the minimum requirements, all right? So if you meet the minimum requirements, then you will receive your final offer. It is quite concerning of the amount of parents that are asking questions. And um, I know we address the issue of, of what they can expect um, and how they should actually support um, their children at university. But I also want you to remind that we are, have to be compliant with the Protection of Personal Information Act. So our client is the student. When the student register, the student, the applicant that applied, that is our client. So we liaise and we correspond with the student and the client in this instance. So I know parents are concerned and we will engage with you, but in the presence of our client. Is that correct? I agree, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So, um, some of the administrative processes, so you receive your final offer and then um, you will get the link to do registration. Um, and the registration can either be online or it can be in person. Um, there's some um, comments about overcrowding in the science faculty. <laughs> I'm not sure what the overcrowding is, but we use a system of oversubscription, I guess that's what it is. So we normally have a 50% turn up at registration. So we give offers to more than the 750 people. That's why this faculty does not have a waiting list. So more people received an offer and then we see who is qualified to come and register with us. Um, I think the other important thing I want to address us, and I'm not seeing that here, is our SunLearn. How did SunLearn help you? SunLearn is our learning management system. So it's where lecturers put their notes, the presentations, and facilitate your learning on the platform. Hmm. How did that help you? I would say, uh, initially, when I started, SunLearn wasn't. It was part of the. the pro, it was part of the learning program, but um, of recent years, it became a big push more to the online, and I th all, most all the material is now online, um, and it's very useful, I would say, because you can access the material um, remotely, um, depending on where wherever you are, and um, you, it's. It's good. And there was recently there's been an update also on Sunlin, which I like. <laughs> <laughs> I can maybe just add, Artika, that Sunlin is the official platform that lecturers will use to communicate um, from the module side to the student. And I know there are lots of um, 
peer groups being formed and uh, we encourage students oh, yes. to connect to one another, maybe through a WhatsApp group for that uh, learning support. But it could happen that it is information overload and students can get confused with all the opinions and ideas. It is recommended that students um, stay uh, 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 tight on the Sunlearn platform and they uh, listen to the announcements on Sunlearn. It, as I said, will be the official platform through which all the lecturers will communicate for their modules to the students. So all the information will be available on Sunlearn and all the arrangements, all the rules, uh, all the requirements should be there. So students should try to focus on that Sunlearn platform. Just to uh, build on from what Dr. Van Sel said, I just, I just remembered that on the Sunlearn platform there are forums where you can ask your questions as well. Um, you will notice that sometimes in the WhatsApp groups there might be some misinformation or you're asking, it's, you're asking your, your, your peers for, for answers when you can um, ask a question on the online forum on Sunlearn to your tutor or directly to your lecturer and they will um, answer your question for you. So there's a very interesting question, actually two of the same question. The one is related to um, one specific program and the other one, but it, it is about the practicals. And our applicants want to know how do we structure the practicals? Is it loose components or is it linked to what they're supposed to know and what are they assessed on it? What do we do in practicals? <laughs> Quite interesting. Uh, maybe I can start. Um, uh, the science faculty is about skills. Um, the idea is that you get hands-on experience uh, of a lot of these skills. It's not just theoretical. So we will provide you opportunities to, so to speak, get your hands dirty in a laboratory environment. Um, it will mostly consist of setups on desks where you can participate with uh, other students, maybe in groups of one or two or by yourself. Uh, you'll be guided by a tutor, uh, you will be given instructions, and we really want to see how you manage uh, applying what you learned in theory on a practical basis. Um, so there are a lot of lab space available, you don't have to worry about that, um, but it's, a, it's an opportunity for where you can really challenge yourself to think and apply all the theory that you have learned. Um, and so it is valuable um, the question of how you will be assessed, well, um, it makes sense that if we require you to be able to build, say, for example, a circuit that works, you'll be tested to see if you can build that circuit. And I think you should orientate yourself in that uh, way. Ask yourself, how will I know that I really know? Well, the answer is test yourself. And so we will provide those opportunities for self-assessment so that you can be assured that your time spent at university is valuable and that you actually attain the skills that you want. So we will, uh, similar to the test and the assessments for the theory, we will try to test whether you have masked the skills that you want for, for, for your degree. I will say from my own experience, you may find, I think, in first year that the practicals may seem mutually exclusive from each other. But as you progress through your academic career, you will see how they interlink and how they actually um, build onto each other to create uh, a bigger picture and you will understand that uh, they'll build onto each other. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and also remember that in some modules, especially in first year, there's a sub-minimum that is required. So you have to obtain a certain mark in your practical for you to write your, your, your other assessment. So it's very important. It's integrated like my colleagues are saying here. Then I have a question about absenteeism. That makes my eyes go big. <laughs> so we grant students leave of absence if they have the necessary documentation for it. Um, we cannot grant extended leave periods, so you can't be absent for two weeks or longer because it would be impossible for you to catch up. So you submit your documentation for, the, for your sick certificate or whatever it might be if you go play rugby in France, then we issue you a leave of absence um, certificate that you can give to your lecturers and they will accommodate you. But this is for shorter periods, three days, five days. If it becomes longer than that, then we would rather recommend that you find alternatives or that you deregister for the module or we, you arrange with me and we find and navigate a way for you. 
Then also there's a question about exemption of modules. So the recognition of modules mm -hmm. either completed at other universities and this particular one is at school subjects. So we do not recognize modules completed at school level because that's NQF level four. And our first year is offered on an NQF level six. Um, and we do recognize modules, but the content must match what we are offering in our curriculum. Then we can give exemption and recognize that modules for you. Then there's a question on waitlisting. Um, so you students that received waitlist is currently registered at another institute. So they have to receive at least 0 0.8 YMS credits and then that waitlist status will change to an offer. If you do not meet that requirement, it will become an unsuccessful. It remains your responsibility to submit your final results to us and alert us that it is now reflecting so that we can consider you. Um, then there's a student, uh, there's an applicant asking about our assessment model. Um, they saw about A1 and A2 and A3, and what does it actually mean? Can oh. be quite <laughs> complicated for someone. Yeah, so generally um, at the science faculty, we have a flexible assessment um, model in the sense that there are different assessments that all contribute to your final mark. Um, the A1, we have a nomenclature for these different assessments. The A1 is usually an assessment that happens during the uh, terms. Uh, and then at the end of the semester or term, depending on the span of the module, there will be a um, sort of a summative assessment that we call the A2. And then if you miss the A2 for some reason or you were absent or you needed extra credit, then there will be an A3 opportunity after the uh, final A2 exam or test. Um, but when you come to campus and you start engaging with the uh, module frameworks, uh, um, there's also an assessment uh, policy that we have. Uh, all of that will be explained for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. how, how do you think, because for, for, for someone coming in in A1 and A2 and suddenly, because they're in school you're just familiar with an exam system and now suddenly there's all of these things happening. How do they keep up and make sure what, what will happen? Many of them end up in tears after A1 because they did not get the desired 90% that they were used to in school. I will say there will be a test that will knock you. <laughs> um, school, school leaving, there will be a test that will knock you, um, but it's not the be all end all. Um, the A1, it's, it's equivalent to a term test um, in terms of the name, and the A2 again, like Dr. Mm -hmm. Fanzel mentioned, is like a, a term exam, and the A3, which I don't recommend to many students to take, I recommend you always do the first opportunity, but you may choose to do the, an A3, which is a supplementary exam, that you may take without giving a reason usually to the lecturer or to model coordinator. Mm. Yeah. I would, if I may, just like to add, um, I think the philosophy at school is to um, prepare yourself for exams in the days and weeks uh, prior to that test. Um, and it's maybe possible to handle that kind of volume of material at school level. Uh, the idea at university is to make sure that you actually master the skills required of you. Uh, look, you want to uh, exit the university with a degree that certifies that you are qualified for what you wanted. And so there is no point in trying to memorize volumes and volumes of information. So it is sad to see students that struggle with the volume of material they have to memorize just before a test. So we highly discourage students uh, memorizing and learning days before a test. So we try to provide assessments um, formative assessments throughout the terms and the semesters so that students stay up to date. Um, this is where planning is important. Make sure that when you come to university you start on day one, prepare yourself, read the material that was prescribed, uh, make sure you spend as much time with the material so that you can actually embed that material in your long-term memory and it becomes a working memory um, and you don't have to then forget about it and then when you leave university, you didn't remember anything. So 
the uh, encouragement is not to try to focus on studying before an exam. It is just impossible. Students get overwhelmed, they get anxious, and we don't want that. Uh, rather, stay up to date from day one. Use every opportunity that you possibly have um, and don't get behind. And then I think you can be um, confident that when you write these assessments that it's a true reflection of what you know. Yeah. Then we have some questions about the technology. We spoke about the computer, the laptop that that is that would be recommended. It's not a requirement, but people are very concerned about Wi-Fi and the data availability. So on campus during orientation, we have technology registration. So during that session, you must make sure that you bring your devices and we put you on the Wi-Fi network on campus and you register your device to use on campus. Is that valuable for a student? Very, very. Yeah. And you will find EduRoom also works um, at various other places that also use the EduRoom platform as well, which is also very useful at, at certain airports, different universities as well, and certain other organizations also use the EduRoom platform. Um, but uh, you can register up to, I think, four to five devices per per user, um, and it's, it's very useful. Yeah. There are, of course, um, uh, computer facilities, computer user areas on campus available. For the science faculty, there's the Narga Center, where there's lots of computers. Uh, they are online. There are um, library computers that are online, so if you don't have Wi-Fi capabilities, you can also make use of the uh, mm. computer areas that's available on campus. Yeah. Then, this is, this is quite a one. So I'll curriculum is structured and has between 128 credits and 140 credits in that year one. So it's quite a full curriculum and mm. the question from, from this applicant is whether it will be possible to register for an additional module in another faculty, something like French um, as a language. Do you think that the first year will be able to cope with an additional <laughs> module? I will say in first year it's it's back to back, eight to five, one hour break. Um, if you were able to do it, I take my hat off to you, but I will say it for, for the majority, um, that may not be the case. Um, I did add psychology onto my degree, but it was, um, it was structured in such a way that I was able to do so. Um, but in first year, the the stresses or the, the, the pressures is more so socially, I would say, academically, yes, but even more so socially and in second year, um, even more so academically. Yeah, and usually um, the, the uh, timetable uh, for the faculty is quite tight. It may be that you won't have time uh, on your schedule to um, fully attend classes in other subjects. So uh, as recommended, it's best that you start your first year, maybe your second year as well, to make sure that you are well-founded in your uh, chosen program. And then, um, yeah, if you want to take anything else, I mean, the world is your oyster, um, apply for it if you um, have experience that you can do it and you can master it, by all means. Then we have some questions about the interdisciplinary program. So this is quite new, combining fields of, in the one um, focal area, is combining biological sciences with mathematical sciences. In the other one, it's combining um, physical sciences with mathematical sciences, and that's what it's all about. Most of our degrees and our programs that we offer have two majors in it, but in an interdisciplinary program, it's combining different things that you normally don't get in the other offerings. So that's the difference between our interdisciplinary programs and the normal programs within biological sciences, within physical sciences and mathematical sciences. Then there's a question about um, how do we or how do they apply for the extended curriculum program? Remember that you need an offer, um, a conditional offer, and then if your final results are missing the cutoff for registration, then you can submit a request for reconsideration or change to an extended curriculum program. That happens in January, and that link to submit your request will be available on the science website. Then, um, Yasin, is there any other 
tips that you want to give our new applicants? I will say um, the one caveat for the ECP program at Army, but I'm not sure if that is still the case. But if you do choose, and I, 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 recommend, I, I enjoy the ECP program, but if you do choose to do so, um, you have to do it to its completion because the modules of the ECP program, I don't think it's recognized by the universities, but only at Stellenbosch. Um, so that's the one caveat of the ECP, pro ECP program that you might want to um, be cognizant of. Um, any tips for surviving Stellenbosch? <laughs> <laughs> You I survived. Would, <laughs> <laughs> I would say work hard, be consistent, but also have fun with it. Have fun with your degree. Yeah. Um, but consistency, for sure. Yeah. And remember that you're doing this for yourself. It's your career, your future. No one sitting next to you or around you has expectations for you, but it's about what you want to do. Dr. Fonso, any tips from a lecturer? <laughs> yeah, I, I want to say it's okay to fail. Um, it sounds bad, but it's okay to make mistakes. The whole point of coming to university is that you learn. And the best opportunity for you to learn, um, the best opportunity for your, uh, yourself, your brain to adapt, is if you're given a challenge. And so I want to encourage, invite and warn at the same time that you will be challenged. And desire that, want it, don't back off <laughs> when it is hard. It will be hard, but that's okay. So I want to encourage, uh, free yourself from the demand. You don't have to uh, succeed in everything. Uh, if you work hard and you put your effort in, you're already successful. So I want to invite you to come and uh, take up the challenge. Yeah, and also remember from my office, um, we are not saying that you're going to fail, but we facilitate um, whatever is happening within your academic career. We make things easy for you, but it's also your, respons your responsibility to reach out to you because we have more than 3,000 students and we will not know when you're struggling mm -hmm. unless we see your marks and then it is too late. Mm -hmm. So you know when you're struggling and you reach out. Not only my office, we also have the Center for Student Counseling and Development where we have educational psychologists, psychologists, psychiatrists that can assist you. And these services are free for you as a student. Other services that exist is the Language Lab, like mm. our student um, mentioned to you now. And then we also have the resources from the library and our computer labs. So. The question about the computer requirement is still coming up. Remember our computer labs in the library, in the computer lab Narga, and also in the study facilities is available 24 seven. So you have access to these things. And if we normally advise a student, what can you afford in terms of a laptop? And then you tell us what your budget is and we will tell you what the computer requirement is. So we don't have prescriptions in terms of you need X, Y, and Z. We look at what it is that you um, can afford. But then also the resources in, on campus are sufficient for you to make a success of it and to use it. Um, with your cell phone, you will also have access to the learning management system, the Sunlearn. So you have access on your cell phone on campus. You have free access to the Wi-Fi and you can access your study material on Sunlearn as such. Then I just want to touch with final questions. I just want to touch on the procedures. So if your grade 11 results were not good enough now, so don't end up... Um, being negative about it, work hard in your exams now, and if your final results are meeting our requirements, submit your request for reconsideration because we do reconsider students in January for the um, for programs again. Also, if you realize during you do some research now during. Um, the period that you write exams and you realize that you're not into this program anymore, reach out to us and to ask for a program change. Nothing is cost in stone. We make those changes for you. Um, so that um, wraps up our faculty session. If you have any further question or you feel that we did not address the question that you had on WhatsApp, 
please send an email to science at sun.ac.za and we will address your questions. You are also welcome to send me your request for program changes and you will find my details on our faculty website. I would like to thank our lecturer, Dr. Van Sale for, and Mr. Da Costa, our student, for accompanying me tonight and answering all of your questions. I hope you have a good evening and hope to see you in January for registration. Thank you. Goodbye.